Uh, here's a excerpt from uh, Bubblehead's The Med Run. This is Garrett Daniels' first trip at sea, and they're steaming along the surface right now, and you know how it is on the surface. It's rocking and it's rolling. And it goes out like this. I didn't think to bring seasick pills, but I did have a lot of Rolades, which I popped like candy. Still, I must confess, I was getting a little queasy. Since it was my first time at sea and I wasn't qualified to do anything, I headed down to the mess decks and boy was that a mistake. Food was really not what I needed to smell. Now there were some old salts at the mess decks who liked to have some fun with those who were having a little problem with the waves, a little green under the gills. Chief Garrison and Chief Ramirez, the chief of the boat, commonly called Cobb, John and a few other enlisted men would order special concoctions from Tony the mess cook, which are designed to make the new guys puke. <laughs> so when John yelled at me to come over and join him, I took a vacant spot next to Chief Garrison, desperately trying to hide the fact that my stomach was rolling. Here, John said with an amused smile, try this special recipe that Tony cooked up. His grandmother brought it over from Italy. He handed me a bowl with a mixture that looked like cream corn with mustard, hot sauce, and I think chopped up boiled eggs. But Tony Vanelli was a New Yorker who was tall and thin and had thick black hair and a huge black mustache perched over his dazzling white teeth. And boy, could he cook. The spices and the flavorings he used in his cooking takes a normal Navy meal up to a whole new level. By now, the aroma of his mixture was getting strong and my stomach was turning more. If Tony's grandmother brought that over from Italy, I bet the rest of the crew didn't make it, I said weakly. Let me try a bite of your grandma's recipe, Chief Garrison said. He was slightly overweight, and his khaki shirt was at least one size too small. His black and white peppered hair was closely cropped on the top of his head, and his matching chest hair sprouted out over the top of his t-shirt as if it was trying to escape. The furry carpet of his hair curled down over his sleeves as it traveled down his arms and almost completely covered up the various Navy slogans tattooed on both forearms. He was commonly known as a lifer dog. Chief Garrison took a spoon, scooped up some of Tony's grandma's recipe into his mouth, and instead of swallowing it, he turned to me and smiled with an open mouth. Well, that just did it. Everything that had been in my stomach for the past six hours made a surprise appearance all over the mess decks. There was a split second of silence, then several people shouted, Yes! And high fives were passed around. John was laughing as he slapped my back, and he said, Welcome aboard, non qual About this time, some of us noticed that the cob was looking down at the floor. Or so we thought. John leaned over from his seat to see what the cob was looking at. I already knew, and I opened my mouth to speak, but no words could come out. My mouth was moving, but the only noise I could make was k k k John burst out laughing again and shouted, Hey, look! He got some corn on the cob! have a stew that you named after yourself rock well still rock stew that's what um i did um we uh when we were in shipyard uh i did a. we lived off base i lived with uh two other guys an electrician and a uh egg anger and we lived off base and so i would do a lot of crock potting because it was cheaper than going to kentucky fried chicken every day uh which was down the road uh, which by the way, I love, but anyway, 
I started doing crock potting and I did different types of, you know, foods, uh, jambalaya, I did, uh, chili. And then I started doing this, uh, beef stew. It's a beef stew recipe that I have, um, over trial and error added different things to it. Um, so that whenever, um, you know, I would go in to the sub, but you know, we was in dry dock. So, uh, in Portsmouth, uh, that would be in Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, I'd set this up and, um, when I come back from, you know, duty, well, it wasn't duty actually, because it was during the week. So I didn't have duty that day, but I did have to report in, but my, uh, my food would be ready. So the recipe, and maybe we can add it somehow to the, uh, to the podcast is there are 12 ingredients. You need stew beef, two pounds, and I won't get down into the, the nitty gritty since we're going to add it, I guess. Uh, but you need stew beef, flour, pepper, salt, garlic, potatoes, of course, onions, stalk celery, two carrots, a quarter cup of Heinz 57, <laughs> uh, which is the kicker. I mean, like, if you don't like Heinz 57, maybe you shouldn't put it in it, but uh, I like it. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and um, a quarter cup, of, one and a quarter cup of uh, beef bouillon. Uh, and then what you do is you just combine the first uh, two, three, four, and five into a bowl. And uh, along with uh, the stew beef. And uh, you coat the stew beef with the flour and the pepper and the salt and the garlic. And then you put it into a crock pot. And, um, and then you add the uh, other ingredients right on top of it. And, um, and then that's it. You just, uh, you set the crock pot on low. And I, I think I said 10 to 12 hours on the uh, recipe, but it, it will actually be done in four to six. Uh, it just usually turned out to be 10 to 12 before I got back, you know, to the, uh, probably makes it more tender, right? It makes it more tender. Sure. I mean, I mean, everything falls apart. Now here's another thing. Don't use frozen vegetables don't use frozen carrots you know uh frozen potatoes or whatever or frozen onions because the crock pot just shrinks them down to <laughs> the, nothing i mean it, it, you, it, it'll take a frozen carrot like that and it'll shrink it down to this little you can barely see it, it looks like a little chunk of carrot you know just, <laughs> but somebody had a post the other day about taking styrofoam cups down to test depth and watching them shrink like that. Or I guess on the Alvin, they were taking them down to 16,000 and, and people were fascinated by shrinkage of, of these cups. And that's all I could think about with these carrots in the crock pot. Yeah. I, well, shrinkage is a problem, especially with pools. But anyway, <laughs> uh, maybe for you, I was in the pool. No, the, uh, I, I, what would they do? How would they, where would they put these styrofoam cups? They, they, they'd hook them on the outside of the ship. So, oh, oh, so they oh, hook oh. them on it. Like, and then they take some of those styrofoam heads for um, mannequins. Uh -huh. They tie them to the outside of the ship. The, I guess it's the research submarine album that's most famous for doing this. We didn't, oh. we didn't do anything like that. The, the only thing we did close to that was uh, we were going to Pearl one patrol mm -hmm. and the cob got a great idea that we would have a picnic ship's picnic in, in Pearl Harbor, but he didn't want to pay Pearl Harbor prices for the beer. So he bought a bunch of cases of beer in cans and decided to store them in the free flood over the missile compartment. You know, I mean, he strapped them down really good. I mean, they weren't moving or anything, but about halfway across the way, the captain decides to go to test depth. And so, oh, we, ended no. up, so we ended up buying more beer anyway. <laughs> So did you, uh, you learn to cook at all? I mean, when you go to the mess decks on the boat, 
sometimes some, I mean, I don't know how to describe this. Sometimes it was hit. Sometimes it was misses. Sometimes it was just pretty average. Do you, uh, any, any inspiration in your cooking from, from what you got on the mess decks anytime? Um, uh, I'm a pretty simple guy. Um, meatloaf, mm. hot dogs, you know, I love meatloaf. I hated Navy meatloaf. You know why? Cause they put what? freaking peas in it. And I hate peas. Really? Yes. I don't, I don't think I, you know, and I, and I really can't remember. We had a, we had a great cook, uh, Eric Byers is his name. Uh, in fact, he opened up a restaurant in, um, Cincinnati, I think a Mexican restaurant. Um, but anyway, he was a great cook, but, uh, I don't remember putting that in, um, I don't I remember putting peas in I used to complain about it. Why do you put peas in this? And, and I think it was Dave Allen was our cook. Um, we had several, but Dave Allen was the, the, the first class. I was, I was bitching to him one day. Why are you putting peas in this? I hate peas. I used to sit there at the table and pick the peas out, and I'd have this this pile of peas <laughs> off to the side of my – I still do that, by the way. That's how I judge Chinese restaurants, by their yeah. peak quotient. Uh, the higher the peak quotient, the less likely I am to eat there. Anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he whipped out one of these recipe cards one day and said, it's in the recipe, Bowman. God damn it. This is how we do it. We follow the recipe. Well, I'm well, not anymore. Well, that's, I, I think it all adds uh, bulk. Mm. But to me, it just adds penis. Oh, did I say that? You did. <laughs> well, you know. The penis. You know, P-E-A-N-E-S-S. Right. I know what you meant. I, yeah. I followed right along. Yeah. Some of that food was really, I, I don't know. I, I, I told, I tell people this all the time. I don't know if they believe me or not, but until I got married to my current wife, um, the, I, I would rather eat Thanksgiving dinner on the submarine than just about anywhere else. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. That food was, if I'm thinking in terms of best submarine food, Thanksgiving, Christmas dinners, man, we, uh, we pulled out one time, right? We normally we would sail on the morning tide here out of mm -hmm. the canal, but for some reason, one time, and I don't remember what the reason was, it's been so long ago, but we decided they, they we were going on the afternoon. So we were going out in the evening. Mm -hmm. The ship's cook got it in his head, the chief got it in his head that, oh, I got time to do something here. So he grabs the, the ship's truck, doesn't tell anybody where he's going, none of that, goes over to Seattle to Pike's Place Market. I guess he had some, I guess he had some money. He bought like 200 live lobsters and wow. back for, for the sailing dinner, lobster, surf and turf, lobster and steak. Yeah. So we had one of these lobsters in my, in the missile control center for a little while. We were going to keep him as a pet, but then we realized we don't mm. we know what lobsters eat. So I <laughs> don't have anybody to sacrifice here. Yeah. We ended up giving them up. That's when I learned. I don't like, I like lobster tail. But I don't like live. I don't like full lobster. I that thing sitting on the plate staring at me that night was like, and then the people across from me started breaking them open. Yeah, and I was done. I no, <laughs> I'm not doing this. No. Well, well, that's what I mean. We pulled into uh, Fort Lauderdale in spring break, 1981, mm. and um, we went to this place called the crab pot or something like that right downtown right off the beach and uh they had all you could eat garlic crab and it was whole crab that you had to sit there and they told me they taught me how to do that which i had no problem with because <laughs> it was good and so maybe uh you know just give peas a chance no uh, <laughs> doing that. so some of the best foods we had i mean th those dinners were really good um I think everybody loved sliders. We had sliders on Saturdays after field day. Sliders, oh. those of you that are non-qualified, useless bodies, hamburgers, cheeseburgers. Yeah. Because they're greasy and they slide. Um, never cared for grinder bird, chicken. But uh, you ate it. I mean, Chief, Master Chief Adamson one time, I, I guess he was bored. I don't know. He, he figured out. He actually did the math and came in with a piece of paper with all these equations on it and everything. He said, do you know how much chicken we have on this submarine right now? Said, no, Master Chief, I have no idea. 17.5 like <laughs> pounds of chicken per man. Wow. That's a lot of dang chicken. So we would have, 
Monday would be Kentucky fried chicken. Tuesday would be Southern fried chicken. Wednesday would be uh, Maryland fried chicken. <laughs> plain fried chicken. Yeah. And I'm not a big fried chicken guy. I know you are because you like the Colonel, but. Oh, I do. I don't like foods I have to fight to eat. That's always been my policy. I still have that policy with my wife. <laughs> she, knows, <laughs> she knows better than to give me that. Stuff. We had a night baker that was out of this world. Uh, Jeff Towell, he, uh, you know, you're talking about your, your cook opening a restaurant. I guess Jeff works at a, um, uh, he's the chef at a, an inn, bed and breakfast inn up in Vermont somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, man, he would, he would bake stuff. And the, the only time I was ever in four section watch ever, I was on the mid watch for weapons tech and my best, one of my best friends, probably not my best friend, but one of my best friends was, was the torpedo of the watch. He was also in, in four section mid watch. And so since I could leave the weapons areas and I guess, you know, I don't know what the rules were for torpedo men on the six thirty sevens, but on the Ohio's they could leave for a little while, I guess. But anyway, we'd get that call around three thirty four in the morning from Jeff. Hey, you guys come taste test this. And so we go to the decks and we were the official unofficial taste testers of whatever Jeff had created that night for, uh, for breakfast and man that was stuff was so good breakfast was my favorite meal still is oh yeah i love i love breakfast on a submarine even even after we run out of eggs i mean yeah. we got the pow powdered eggs then yeah because i want uh in those days it's different now but in those days i wasn't all that big of an egg guy uh, oh, okay and and i only i really only like my eggs scrambled so when they were powdered you know, what's the diff i mean yeah it never really bothered me but man, all the other stuff is that I, what I liked. And of course, the, the all time favorite is the ba biscuits and gravy, as you mm -hmm. can tell. I, I love biscuits and gravy. <laughs> not the only thing Southern left in me is I love biscuits and gravy, man. That was, yeah. that was my favorite. And I'd sit there as long as I could eating that stuff. Those guys could cook, man. They could cook. And they yeah. did. And they cooked up a lot. That, but what is, what's your favorites? What do you like? Well, uh, for field day after field day which we had on fridays um we had biologics for lunch um you know it'd be the fried shrimp or whatever like that but the <laughs> the biggest uh, i mean the best things that i can remember is like halfway night you know we were halfway on a patrol mm -hmm. and um they would actually i mean i thought we were in the boardroom because they would bring out these blue tablecloths you know, and stuff like that. And the, uh, captain, uh, would help cook mm. and, and the officers were the cranks, uh, for halfway night. And, um, and they served this steak and lobster and actually the steak and lobster stuff was really good. And it was lobster tails. Right, so, right. It, so it wasn't the whole lobster, but, um, it was really good food. I was going to ask you if you guys did the halfway night. Cause we, we did that. And yeah, I, I didn't know if fast tax did it or not, but we did it. And, uh, we, we do something similar to that. We had two things. We had vote for mess cranks. So uh, it was like 10 cents a vote or something for the MWR committee morale welfare committee. And whoever got the most votes would, would be the cranks that night. And it was always, there, there was always some nuclear office new engineering officer who would end up, cranking and who would hate it because he would know he knew who was voting for him to be yeah. there. Um, but we started this thing. This, this is, uh, this was something we started late in my career. And, and it's kind of, we, we've mentioned before that we have a captain in common. Captain Bombstark mm -hmm. was, was our captain at the time. And so we started this thing where we, I don't know how we got him to agree to it because it, it does seem a little outside of his personality, but he agreed to let us vote to send people to eat in the wardroom. And it started out as this really kind of jokey thing where we would send an enlisted guy to eat in the wardroom on halfway mm -hmm. night. And so it was kind of like a punishment, you know, sort of just like the crank thing yeah. but to his credit. And uh, he turned that into a real treat kind of thing. I mean, it got to the point where by the time I left, people were bidding on themselves and I'm not talking about 10, $15. I'm talking about hundreds of dollars to wow. go in the wardroom that night because he really turned it into a, a very special 
kind of evening thing where he basically he basically made them the XO in the wardroom. Yeah. And he really, he really turned that into something really cool. And it got to the point where we had to send two because we were making so much money on it. <laughs> That's and, an excellent idea. Yeah. And it, well, it only works if you have a captain that'll go along with it. And Bomb Stark, Captain Bomb Stark did go along yeah. with that. And he really made it, he really made it something that was worth uh, being a part of. And I, I never got to go. So I was like, well, crap. <laughs> You know, I was busy being the MWR chairman and the halfway night MC and MCing the Miss Michigan contest on halfway night, which was always, a, I mean, the stuff we did that you couldn't get away with, you couldn't yeah. think about nowadays. Um, but it was, uh, it was always, a, that was always a fun night. Worst food ever, Brock? Do you have something you just absolutely hated that? Uh they they made a beef stroganoff, which they had a different name for it, and um, the beef was the canned beef, and it was mostly gristle. Ugh. So I mean, the noodles and the taste of it was fine, but the the canned beef was mostly gristle, and uh, I didn't enjoy that at all. So we're sitting in Pearl Harbor. May have been the time we were going over there for, for that. So, you know, only half the crew is on board anyway. And I guess the cook had, uh, had a fun night the night before and wasn't really into to doing things uh-huh. the next day. Yeah. We got this thing on the menu called beef balls, porcupine, which I have subsequently come to understand many people really like. It's basically meatballs with rice embedded in it. Oh, and, okay. Not like freeze- mountain. Not like mountain oysters, then. No, and okay. it's yuck, gravy <laughs> over it. Says the guy, says me from the Rocky Mountains. Anyway, point being that, um, I don't know what happened with this stuff, but it was so bad, it was inedible. Oh wow! Well. And <laughs> I understood. It's my understanding that the cook ended up going to Captain's Mast over that meal, but really, yeah, it was bad. It was bad, and it was. We'd have, I think we even had a visitor from the, from comm sub pack that night, which is probably what made it worse, but anyway, oh, wow. it was, it was uh, so, but that, that even what, that was the worst meal. The most disappointing meal was the, our menu would come out Sunday night on the mid watch yeah. for the entire, for the coming week. So you'd know midnight Sunday, what you were going to have the rest of the week. And we would have people circling stuff and Xing stuff out on their copies of the people had their own personal copies of the menu so that they would know, yeah, wake me up for this one. Don't wake me up for that one. Right. I'll skip that. I'll sleep in on them. So this thing comes out Sunday night, Monday morning, early Monday morning. And the following Sunday, a week later at, at lunchtime, is this dish called Noodles Jefferson. I'm not making that up. Noodles Jefferson. Okay. Nobody knows what it is. And the cooks won't tell you what it is. Hey, what is this? No. I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. <laughs> and so <laughs> for a week, I swear to God, for a week, your little growler phone would ring. Whoop, 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 whoop. Pick it up. I was a bomb in this control center. And someone would yell, Noodles Jefferson, and hang up. <laughs> <laughs> and this went on for an entire week. <laughs> Noodles Jefferson. Okay. <laughs> to the point where people are like, you know, is this, is this a porn star? Is it a dish? What the heck is this stuff? Noodles. Yeah. <laughs> so Sunday noon rolls around and you know, everybody's off, you know, you know how this normally works, right? The oncoming watch eats first, the offgoing watch eats second, and then right. everybody else can, comes in there and eats. Well, and that third shift, there's not a lot of people because most people are asleep or doing something else. Well, Sunday, Sunday lunch rolls around the entire ship is lined up because they want noodles. Jefferson. They, they <laughs> know what that is. And it was so disappointing. It turned out to just be egg noodles with Parmesan cheese on them. Oh God. And it was like, wait, all this build up for this. <laughs> noodles. Jefferson became the, I think I think we still have a crew member, former crew member who's that's his that's his online identity is Noodles Jefferson. 
<laughs> He's a police officer too. So oh, wow. <laughs> and of course, then there was always the um, the bug juice, the coffee. I it's weird to me, Brock, because I didn't drink coffee when I was on the submarine. Really, I did not drink. I didn't like it back then. I I didn't learn to like coffee and drink coffee. And of course, I drink it black. So I didn't start drinking coffee till I was. 36, 37 years old. I started drinking coffee on a submarine. I thought I would, but I didn't. I did. I mean, I started drinking it with the cream and the sugar mm. and, and all of that. Mm. And then, of course, you know, after a month or two, you know, I'm just like too lazy to put in the cream and the sugar. So I just started cutting back on, you know, one or the other. And like, and then, and it just ended, it finally ended up black. So, too I lazy drink. to put in cream and sugar. It was like so much work. I it was like, oh come on, I got to put this in and that in, and I'm like, I got to find a spoon. I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot of work, there, man. Yeah. Then you got to walk from the uh, mess decks, you know, go up the stairs. The what? Oh, that keeps doing that. What? Go up the what is it? Passageway. Ladder, go up the ladder. Um, uh, well, it was stairs, but I mean, it'd go up the ladder and uh, head back aft, you know. And I've got like one, two, three watertight doors to get, you know, back aft. And you're going, you're lazy, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, and you got to walk, you know, without spilling. So, Plus, when you're a non-qual, you got to carry like four or five cups because you don't oh, have a coffee run. You got to make different trips, and you got to carry the old cups back, you right. know, because because they will collect and maneuvering and, and then you got everybody's and, order right. I want one cream, no sugars. One cream, three sugars. Oh, I hate that. I want huh? I want I was, one cream, three sugars, and a package of hot chocolate. Oh, that is one of the orders they love to have a package of hot chocolate in with their coffee yeah. the, the guy said mitch yakaza the guy I stood watch with that's what he had okay we're in missile control center we are literally one level above the mess decks okay mm -hmm. and he would make me go get that yeah, make, sure put, make sure you put cream and, and hot chocolate in it yeah it's like that's it's probably why I didn't drink coffee because what's the point? This isn't coffee. This if you want all that sugar and caffeine and everything, I want you to drink Pepsi or Coke, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, of course, our ice machine never worked, so I don't know. We but, that thing used to drive me nuts because I in those days, Brock, I had to have ice. I had to have ice in everything, yeah. and our ice machine broke like a week after the. <laughs> we well. Hey, I can remember our ice machine working. I remember it not working, but it seemed like our ice cream machine worked almost all the time. I vaguely remember that. I don't really remember the ice cream machine per se. I, I know where it would have been. I mean, I can see it in my mind. Yeah. I don't ever really remember. I don't know if it was just broken all the time or, or if I just didn't care. I mean, it was like one of those things where, I just don't remember, but I do remember that ice machine breaking. And I remember cause, cause I'm a little high strung sometimes. Yeah. And you like to chew on ice. It went, oh man. Yes. And we oh, had the crunch, we had the crunch ice machine. So it's the perfect ice for that. Yeah. And you would drive everybody else nuts. Right. I guess that's probably what they did. They probably broke it on purpose to keep me from doing that. <laughs> but man, it's, we had a, it, it, it broke. The, the yeah. ice broke. So one of our machinist mates, a ganger, John Baranella is, is working on it, but I guess he had to stick his head inside the machine mm. and it was very narrow and very tight. And he was like, mm, and you could get stuck <laughs> real easily, which of course, none of us would have been unwilling to do exactly what he needed to do to help if he did get stuck. So a few nights later, I guess we we're doing angles and dangles up and down with the boat mm -hmm. and he couldn't sleep. And he had a, four aft bunk so and i guess during one of the down angles he slid into the his head into the the eab locker <laughs> and got stuck and he's screaming bloody murder because he's having a nightmare that he's trapped inside the ice machine 
<laughs> and everybody's just standing there like nobody's waking him up going john it's okay it's okay everybody's just standing there watching and laughing because that's what we do and <laughs> yeah that's what we do <laughs> that, was, uh, that was great the bug juice was always i think that's what i drank more than anything was the bug juice or coke the coke sucked because we didn't have any ice but the yeah. bug juice you ever see anybody actually use that to clean stuff with i, I was um, it can be used for that but i've never actually seen it done I, the cook uh, that I was saying, Eric, I, I remember him saying, um, or it might've been one of the cranks, but anyway, they would use, uh, a, a green bug juice to right, green. clean, clean the grill. Yeah. I've heard that. I've never actually seen it done. No, I haven't either, but, but I know it was very acidic. Tasted good though. I couldn't drink so I, it would tear my stomach up. It would be so acid. It all tasted the same. It's just different colors. It's like, I don't even know why. I don't even know why they have the different colors because it all tastes the same. But yeah, I don't remember a, a, a different taste between them. It's like, uh, and there was green and there was red. Wasn't red. there blue or it was a yellow that I remember? There was oh, like, yellow. Maybe it's yellow. It's like, it's like uh, Fruit Loop cereal. Well, these different yeah. colors, but they all taste the same. <laughs> yeah, and I drink a lot of that, <laughs> that Coca Cola, which is probably and and then I finally hit on this idea of I'm not gonna because the Coca Cola that they used the mix that they used was it would suck. I mean, it's just, just, you know how it's just, I don't know if it was the the mixture. I don't know if it was the CO. I don't know what it was. So anyway, I started bringing cases of Coke with me. Yeah, they can't get they couldn't get the uh, uh, the the uh, combination correct between the amount of syrup and the and the carbonation and the water and it's right. got to be there's a set like, point for that. You know? It wasn't like it was their top priority either. No, they're busy working on noodles, Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys make popcorn for uh, flick burn flick night? Uh, no, I don't remember about that. Uh, I don't remember. I, I'm. I know we did a lot of uh, soft serve ice cream, uh, but I suppose they did. I yeah. can't remember though. I made popcorn once or twice, and then I'm thinking right around my third patrol, which would have been patrol three point seven or so, is when microwave popcorn really became a thing. Really, before everybody knew that it give you lung cancer and everything else. Oh, so it will. That's what they say. I I guess you got to stand there and breathe it. I don't. I mean, I don't know who does that. I and still eat it. I'm I'm sure that the Navy will go, this is atmosphere contaminant. Yeah. And the before all that happened, but but microwave popcorn became a big thing. And so we would we would just use the microwave and make that. But burning those flicks. And I was there right here around the same time. I kind of consider myself a intergenerational submariner because when I joined when I got there, when I got there, the Sea Dragon, the the skate class were still in commission even though we were still commissioning the, the, the seven twenty sixes and the new, the second flight six eighty eights, technology was tried the submarines for all their vaunted technology. It was still 1970s stuff. I mean, it was the same stuff that was in the six forties and the six eighty eights and the six thirty sevens. But at the same time, attitudes were shifting. People were changing. The Navy was changing. Uh, and we were going from 16 millimeter movies to to beta max movies and eventually oh. VHS. So I, I, I feel like I got to experience the old and the new a little bit, although I didn't go to sea on a, on an older submarine kind of wish I had, but, but uh, you know, was, the, the burning flick nights, even in my time changed from having to go through setting up all that whole, that whole 16 millimeter thing, which was fun. Uh, and I only got to, do, I only got to do that. I only got to set it up and choose the movie one time because I was ahead on my quals or something. And so they gave me a reward. You choose the movie. Um, okay. And we had all the bond flicks on 16 millimeter. All the oh, wow. Where at the time, which wasn't a lot, but, um, and, but then we went to the, the beta max machines, which were just, God, those things were so bad. <laughs> so, so really, I mean, they're gigantic to start with, uh. but the selection that we had for tapes was just, just bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't they, uh, and, and I wasn't around for the, uh, the VHS Betamax 
era that was before my time. We are, we had the uh, uh, the real to real movies, but uh, the screen. It seemed like if you with the Betamax, you you would what put it on a TV? Yeah, it was on a TV. Yeah, which is a lot smaller than the screen. Right, it was, and that was. You know, that's kind of a drawback when you're looking for just pure entertainment. But at the same time, yeah, a little more selection because you could bring more tapes. And and then the VHS revolution happened. And right around, it would have been right, right around 1985, early 85, um, the MWR, of which I, at the time I was the vice chair, decided that we were going to buy a VHS machine for the crew. The crew was going to buy a VHS machine. Mm-hmm. And for some reason... I remember the cob being on, he was on leave or something. I don't know. He wasn't there for the vote. And so the vote was unanimous. Well, we go out and buy this $500 VHS. Cause that's how much they used to cost kids. Oh yeah. Back and then, man, when he came back, he was so pissed. He was in the overheads, man. Boom, 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 boom. He was screaming and yelling and I'm like, what the hell do you care? It's not your, it's not your money. Yeah. Why did he this care? Is what the crew wanted. Anyway, once we got that VHS, then we ended up getting another one after the price came down a hundred dollars or so. And so we had one in the mess decks, one in the cruise lounge. And it was, uh, that was pretty much the end of the 16 millimeter. Thing. <laughs> you know, why, why go through all that effort? Speaking of being lazy, why go through all the effort setting that up when you just pop in a videotape, you know? And yeah, you know, I saw games. What was it? Game six, the 86 world series. When, uh, oh, on, on videotape. Yeah. Yeah. We got the, we, we did a mail drop, I guess, about two weeks before we came in, and one of the guys got the game six of the World Series, and we're, uh, Bill Buckner lets the ball go between his legs. Oh, yeah. I was sitting uh-huh. on the mess decks, and that was probably at least a month after it happened. At least, actually, it was probably closer to two months after it happened, and I was still pissed because you know, <laughs> I'm a Red Sox fan, but there you go. So, of course, the Mestex turns into meeting places. You have general military training there, which is, I don't know about you guys, but, man, our our GMT sucked. I hated that. Well, they're boring. I mean. They're boring, and everybody's in there. So you you can't even spread out a little bit and relax. And It's like you're. You're all bunched in. It's like basic training, nut the butt all over again. I hated that. Yeah. Whereas did our award ceremonies in there? The picture of me getting my dolphins is on the mess decks, uh, award ceremonies, those kinds of things. But then you do other events, right? Did you, uh, you, did you go through blue nose? I think you did. Did you guys do that yeah. on the mess decks? Uh, it, it did happen. It happened without me. Ah, well, there I, you go. I slept in. Slept through. God, you're lazy. I know. They, I can remember the, um, what they call them? The guy that woke you up. Well, we called it the missile compartment roving patrol, but roving patrol, messenger. whatever. I mean, messenger, the messenger, messenger. That's it. The messenger woke me up and said, uh, you're a, you are in, um, uh, how did he put it? Not required or maybe said required. You're required was, to be required. on the mess. Yeah. To be on the mess decks. Um, uh, for blue nose ceremony and i said something about uh get out of here or something like that or i i can't remember i don't know if i was rude or not but i because i was sleepy but anyway i went back to sleep and when i woke up several hours later you know it, they were cleaning up the mess decks at that point but uh because i had to go and watch it and i'm like oh i guess i missed the whole thing so no i did not go through blue nose did you go through blue nose I, we did not we never we never went any, well, I mean, oh, I, you never go anywhere, went, but, 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 but we came close, but we never made it across. And even if we had, we would have been alert. So they probably would have said mm, too noisy, yeah. too but noisy. Yeah. They never said that about halfway night, which is dumb. They never said it about field day, you know, cause we gotta be quiet, Brock. We gotta be yeah. dead silent because we don't yeah. want the Huskies to know where we are. That's so right. Every Saturday morning from seven to and 11 we're slamming deck plates right let's let's make as much noise as we possibly that's right because the ship the only thing worse than being found is being found dirty yeah that would suck. you did the same thing with your good conduct award didn't you you just kind of blew that off 
Well, they usually have a ceremony, and uh, and I'm of course I'm not into that. And and the uh, XO, I was walking by his stateroom, and he said, "Petty Officer Brock," and I said, "What?" Or maybe what, sir? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he said, "Here," and he tossed the uh, the good uh, good conduct medal over to me. He says, "Hey, I know you're not into, you know." The hoopla. I, I said, "Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, thanks." But, so, because I mean, basically, you you get a good conduct medal if you don't do anything, if you don't get in trouble, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't well, yeah, if you don't get caught, if you if you if you don't, if you're not busted in rank or come up to captain's mass, which you know came up later, but anyway, it was, you know, that's. See, it, I, it, I guess I it, feel different about it because I've got two of them. Although I will be very clear about the fact that the second one was 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 a gift. I mean, there was no way I should have got that, but I did. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, and that's good. I mean, I, I mean, I, some of the other ribbons I think are more more valuable to me, or even the dolphins. Yeah, uh, is, is a lot more valuable to me. I than think, I think that's my number one. The dolphins are, are, are above and beyond everything. I think of, of all the rest of them, I think the only one that really even, I don't want to say has any, because the battle E is pointless. I mean, we only had three submarines in our squadron. So yeah. they rotated each, each, you know, whatever the time frame was. Yeah. The conduct was you know, the key dunk medal for the national defense was a joke, but we did get a meritorious unit commendation. Yeah. Our, uh, for our follow on test that we did. And we did it in a way that was at, at that point had never been done before. We, we did the turnaround after launching four missiles. We did a four missile OT and we did the turnaround in, in like four days cleaning mm-hmm. everything else. So we did get a muck for that. And that's the one that I'm probably most proud of. Cause I feel like I actually contributed to that. I didn't do anything for the battle. E. I mean, that's like, oh, yeah. I was here. Yeah. And, you know, the national defense medal. I was in during the first Gulf war. So they gave me a medal for that. So that's, you know, I'm a war hero, Brock. Is that what puts you in the VFW? Is that what? Yeah. Is that no, what? the VFW thing comes from the uh, ballistic missile side of things. Oh, okay. For some reason SSBN patrols are eligible for VFW membership while SSN patrols for some bizarre reason are not. And there are a great number of us who have withdrawn from the VFW and stayed away from the VFW for not for that reason. Now there is an exception to that. I think it has to do with one of the medals. There's a spec op medal that you get. That's it's like the, it's the blue one with the yellow stripe. I don't know what it's called. Um, if you have that, you're eligible. Yeah. But it's like, okay, so if I make a boomer run and I do nothing else, I mean, literally I don't even qualify ships. I don't do anything. I just ride along for ballistic missile patrol. I'm eligible for VFW. Right. But if I, if I'm, if I'm on an SSN that makes a patrol that doesn't necessarily earn one of those uh, service medals or something like that, then I'm not, that doesn't make any sense to me. And well, plus, you know, we can't talk about what we did anyway. So we may have done stuff that would qualify us, but Hey, we can't talk about it. So. Right. But in many you know. cases they have that, God, I can't remember the name of the medal. Somebody will send it in to us. Right. Sure. <laughs> Dave, it, Dave Dolphin Dave at slipperyfish.com. You can remember, I don't I don't remember the name of the metal. I just I vaguely remember being blue with yellow stripes and some kind of service metal or something. I could look it up. I've got the power of the internet right in front of me, but I just don't like Brock. I just don't care that much. So yeah. <laughs> lazy to do it. We don't have it, so yeah, I never we don't it. care. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I never got it. And and we're not like those skimmer pukes, you know, with these rows of metals for you know, successfully went to the bathroom. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. We have our base meetings in a VFW. And that's how I get into VFW right now. It's just because that's where we have our VF, we have our base meetings. Right. Uh, and I'm in as a guest. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know. I used to belong to VFW and I, I actually used to belong to the American Legion. Um, where I was was so it was so depressing, Brock. I mean, it really was not only did you have the issue of 
why can Dave get in? Cause he's a boomer sailor and this other guy can't cause he's a fast actually. Like, that was stupid. But the whole thing just <laughs> swear to God, it just turned into this, the American Legion versus the VFW. And you had about half of each post that were both members, member, dual memberships. Yeah. And it was like, Oh my God, it was, I just don't need this. So now I belong to the fleet reserve association. I just joined that uh, mostly because I, I, I know this sounds weird, but I need a hangout place. I need a place where I can just go that isn't here and yeah. sit <laughs> yeah. and the fleet reserve gives me that. I mean, it's basically a bar that I'm now a member of. Um, and of course, submarine veterans, which is something that I passionately believe in and something that I've, I very much enjoy being a part of. Um, and it, it's something that's, it, it's, it's my soul. I mean, submarines are really my soul it, 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 and it's core core. I tell this people, I tell people this all the time. I was born to be a United States Navy submariner. If I had my druthers, if I could pick anything in the world to do, that's where I'd want to be. And I still can't believe I gave it up. That was dumb. Are we too old to uh, to rejoin submarines? I, I I see some chatter about that sometimes on Facebook or Instagram. But you know, if they're know. a certain age, you know, it's like I don't know yeah. if I'm too old or not, Brock. Here's what I know: two things. Uh, one, my former XO became the chief of naval operations a few years ago. Yeah, when I was in radio, so I called up his office and said, "Hey, I want to interview the new CNO. I'm with the press." Blah blah blah. So this, uh, his assistant is a full on captain, Captain Daniel Gallegos, I believe was his name, right? He mm-hmm. doesn't know me from anything. He just knows I'm a media guy. And so he keeps saying, just call me Danny. I'm like, no, sir, I'm not doing that. I'm calling a full bird captain, Danny. I'm, you know, just not doing that. Yeah. Anyway, he, uh, he found out later that Admiral, Admiral Greenard had been my XO. And uh, so that kind of cleared that up for him. Anyway, Admiral Greenert told me at the end of the interview, he says, oh, if you, know, you know, if you get the itch or something, let me know. I've got some pull now and I can, uh, I can make some things happen for you. <laughs> if you really want to <laughs> I took him up on it. I should have, I should have said, Hey, I, w- I want to do a day Bob cruise or something, but I never did. Yeah. Cause there's been movies, um, uh, about, yeah, maybe it was Clint Eastwood, Bruce Willis and somebody that came back as either an astronaut or right. Right. Space or cow- something. Space Cowboys? Okay, yeah. So I was thinking, well, maybe. So the other thing that happened to me that convinced me that it doesn't have anything to do with age anymore is two years ago, we had our reunion for our crew from the 1980s of the USS Michigan. And we got a special tour of the USS Kentucky, which is our sister ship, right? Mm -hmm. Ostensibly, she is identical to us. Ostensibly. I mean, she's more modern in this D5 and blah, blah, blah. But physically identical, right? Mm Mm-hmm. She's not. I can tell you she's at least, at least 40 to 50% smaller than we were. Cause, oh, really? Because I had a hell of a time getting down that hatch, man. <laughs> <laughs> this didn't used to be this hard. This used to be really easy. Yeah. And those passageways <laughs> are tiny and those bunks. God, I couldn't get into my rack anymore if I had to. And yeah. The, and the bathroom stalls. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't even <laughs> fit in here. <laughs> You take a shower and it's like you're in a coffin, you know? Well, I kind of think that it has a lot less to do with my age, although it, I don't know. We were a lot younger back then. And I guess like Tom Clancy once said, that's what I miss more than anything is being young enough to think this was fun. Yeah. Well, I know I weigh more than I did back then. So yeah, that's kind of what I was hinting at. But. Yeah. Yeah. 130 pounds ago i could get right down these hatches it didn't matter plus my knees aren't what they used to be and yeah uh, man those ships are so small now so so small but i'll tell you what i i i've said this before i'll say it again if if the country needs me president decides hey you know what i need is a bunch of old submariners come back and do this i'll I'll go i'll i'll be a lot slower than i used to be but yeah. it will go without any hesitation. Well, as long as they have the ice machine. Working. Right. They have yeah. to have that and absolutely no beef balls porcupine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>